Hey guys, Colver here. Welcome to another Ray Challenge video. Guys, in this one, I'll be showcasing Gurgo the Ogre. I just love this champion. I recently re-geared him, so I want to showcase him in a video to just show what this guy can do. He is the real Frost King. I mean, we do have Whirlim. He was the reward for the, the Battle Pass last year, so I don't know if we're ever going to have a Battle Pass again, but this guy is so underwhelming and he should have been the Frost King, but honestly, it's this guy, it's Gurgo. He has an amazing kit and we'll go through it. And if you do have Gurgo, then you'll be surprised on how many uses you can do uh, with uh, Gurgo, especially in, in areas like Arena, but you can also use him in Dungeons and of course, Faction Wars. So he does have some reviews. We'll see these now, uh, like 4.7 on Arena offense, 4.5 on defense, and uh, some others. Clan boss is totally, totally reasonable here because his whole kit is just freezing enemies and you can freeze the clan boss and the other ones he has a 3.5 i mean if you require something to control the enemy waves then he he should be at the four so maybe a 3.8 i guess some people put a four and some people put a three so it averages out all right it's reasonable so the way that i build gorgo guys is just perception sets and speed we'll come back to the gearing part but first let's look at his um skills so icebreaker is his eight one tax one enemy two times Place an extra hit if the target has a freeze debuff. So if you use a different skill first or you have somebody else that freezes and this guy goes with his A1, the attack will be a free hitting attack. This is fantastic if you have him geared with some damaging uh, gear as well. So let's look at his A2, which is what makes him so, so great. This is what he uses on auto always. So Bone Chiller removes two random buffs from all enemies, has an 80% chance of placing a freeze debuff on all enemies for one turn. So first he removes the buffs and then he freezes the enemies. And this goes to 100% when you book it out. I recommend on booking the guy if you do have the books and you need something for arena. If you have a limited amount of books, then don't go for it because 80% chance is still very, very good but grants an extra turn after he uses this. So this basically is like a three turn cooldown, not a four turn cooldown when you do book it out. So um, very good cooldown on this skill. Um, four turns, as I said, because you get the extra turn, you get three turns. So you freeze them first. And then if he goes for his A3, he'll use A3. Or if he goes for his A1, he'll be hitting three times. As I said before, when the enemy has a freeze debuff, then you hit three times. And then finally, Avalanche attacks one enemy, place an extra hit if the target has a freeze debuff. So it's basically this one, you freeze the enemies and then he goes in with Avalanche at A3 to do like a double hit on the enemy. Remember guys that I do not really recommend on going heavy DPS on Gurgo just because you'll be freezing the enemies and that freeze will also cause the enemies to take 25% less damage. So they'll take 75% of the normal amount you would have crit or done a normal hit or whatever because of the freeze hit, it makes them take less damage, which doesn't make real sense to me because a frozen target isn't, wouldn't a frozen target be more fragile? Like you break the ice. I mean, that makes sense, right? That makes sense. I don't know why they made it like this, but okay, whatever, we'll go with it. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go with it. And then finally, Frost Embrace, another um, thing that freezes. Frost Embrace has a 50% chance of placing a freeze debuff on the attacker for one turn if this champion loses more than 20% of their max HP on one attack, which means if he does get attacked, he'll freeze them at a 50% chance. Um, I really do enjoy this because he's very, very squishy. He just gets one hit on him and he probably is going to die. <laughs> he's very, very squishy. He's more um, there for the control. That's why I call him the, the Frost King. In my opinion, he is great for the freezes. And I also has increased ally attack in Faction Chris by 44%. This is huge. This is huge uh, amount of buff for your uh, attack, especially if you have something else in the Ogre Tribes that needs that attack boost. So let's go over the gearing. The way that I've geared Gurgo, guys, is for Arena solely, and this is why he has all perception sets and some speed. If you are not going for Arena, then I would suggest something even like a Relentless set would be so good on Gurgo uh, because he will be getting those extra turns and he already gets an extra turn on that A2. He goes in with the A3, maybe he gets an extra turn there. I do enjoy that. If not, then maybe you can build him more tanky uh, so that he can actually survive a few hits. But then again, there's so many other ways to build him. For arena specifically, and more high-end arena where you need at least over 300 accuracy, 
this is the build that I recommend just going more accuracy, um, as much accuracy as possible, honestly, but this is how I could build him. Only 542 accuracy here, 100% crit rate, 156 critical damage, 252 252 on the speed and uh, 2.5k attack. Not that great on the attack part, but the crit rate is good. So we'll crit with mostly everything and critical damage at 156 is not bad because of this, um, basically because of the amulet. So what I did is went crit rate on the gloves, trying to get as much accuracy as possible and some speed. See, I haven't even glyphed him out because he's not really a priority uh, for me, but he will be used in some situations for pvp purposes i do have accuracy on the chest because i want to get at least over 500 accuracy there's not gonna be many enemies against you in high gold 4 with um, a lot of accuracy so usually you'll need about 300 for gold 4 purposes the higher you go the limit just breaks and it's just get as much accuracy as possible but then there are other teams in play so i would suggest at least 300 for gold 4 and contenting to get to gold four. So 300 will be a very, very uh, solid case. You wouldn't even need like a uh, banner or a chest with accuracy. So not even the great hole and you would reach 300, I think with just the same gear as this. So you would get 80 from four perception pieces plus the substat, you'll get there. But uh, definitely you would lose about 300 accuracy by just losing the chest, losing the banner and then losing the great hole, which Everybody should be slowly developing. So let's go over the masteries very quickly because we need that accuracy. We went support tree. We went for that eagle eye. And the reason we also got evil eye, eagle eye and evil eye, evil eye because it does that 20% turn meter control. So when you get that extra hit with that A2, you can um, elect. So you can choose to go for that A1 if you're doing the fight on manual. So you actively control the turn meter of the enemy. You already have the accuracy. So that terminator control is very, very possible. And going on targets like the, the speed booster, like an arbiter means so, so much. Uh, and you getting that extra, uh, you know, turn with your other characters because the speed booster of the enemy team will be uh, getting their terminator reduced. So I did also go for the defense route right here for retribution when we counter attack uh, right here. And with deterrence, of course, you could have gone for something like cycle uh, cycle of revenge getting extra terminator when somebody gets attacked but honestly um if if an aoe drops in the in in, in your team gurgo is probably gonna die he has very very squishy um squishy stats so he is at how much health Thirty thousand health i mean they will sneeze on gurgo and he's gonna die honestly but uh we'll need we'll need him there for the control and because he's so squishy, it means he gets targeted first instead of my nuker, and my nuker is Tranda. So, uh, let's very quickly go in the arena, and I'll show you guys what Gurgo can do in there, and then we'll go to the dungeons and see what does he do with the same kind of gear. Although it's not recommended, so it's going to be the same kind of gear. So, uh, the teams are a bit of a mixture here. I want to refresh. We're very close to Platinum. I'm trying to keep close so we can do an attempt tomorrow morning for uh so in 15 hours to do an attempt to get that um get that platinum ranking so let's do a refresh and see the teams here so yeah much better teams everybody has arbiter so this enemy team has a very very strong setup right here it's an arbiter in there let's get our refresh it's an arbiter in uh in here in the lead so we do need something to cleanse from uh from torment so i'm gonna still use gurgo there because I want him to remove buffs and freeze. So since this is a showcase, we do have Sky Touched in there, which is going to be assisting us in getting that block debuffs and also a cleanse. So she is faster than Gurgo. Gurgo is the third fastest and Tranda is the last one um, there. So she is the slowest actually in my team. So let's see if we get the speed advantage. So we are a bit faster than the enemy. And uh, look at this. We get the speed boost going, but... We are frozen here, so we'll cleanse that. Here, the enemy team goes. Let's see, he did a, a refresh there. I think it's the AI didn't go for the uh, remove of the buffs and went for the speed boost, but it's fine. We got a turn there because um, although we did get cut in because he his speed is very low, and we're going to go with that A2. Look at that. We got three freezes on very important characters and removed any buffs that were applied. And now we can go with either A3 which is going to give just three hits 
uh, no, two hits, three hits is, is on the A1. So what I want to do is I want to do um, just a triple hit on this Cadrophone. But no, he's still, so I can't do that. So I'll probably just go for for the enemy Arbiter there. And uh, I think we got resisted there. I didn't see the Terminator reduced. It's fine. Let's do an A2 here. Hopefully we'll remove this. No, we got resisted. And now the freeze is over. We can just go A3 with Tranda. And it's over. This is more end game setup, of course, guys. But you see the potential that uh, Gurgle brings in there with that buff removal. And, of course, that freeze. And then, of course, you elect to um, to do that A1. So this one has a hedgy against us. I don't want to go against this one. Uh, this one's going to suck. Um, so in this team, I wouldn't use Gurg uh, Gurgo in here. So I'm not going to show you guys this one. Uh, let's see a team that can buff a lot. So this enemy team is probably going to be very annoying. So there's a Lydia in here. Lydia gives 100 resist to the enemy team. There's a reason you need so, so much uh, accuracy here. So 100 resist just by having a leader plus maybe 400. This this Warlord is going to be impossible to control. So I'm going to put in my Lysandra. So we definitely uh, have a continuation there of, of our champion. So we do have the speed lead here. And we boost. See, actually, three of these got resisted. So they have a ton, a ton of resistance. My Lysandra has about 400 accuracy or 350. And everything got resisted. So these guys have at least 350 um, on their own. Let's see those freezes there. We did get them. So 550 or so was enough. So they should have been around 400 to 500 plus the, plus the aura. With the aura. So uh, our 550 was more than that. So definitely look at all that control. Uh, I want to go on that Warlord. He's going to be the tankiest. Look at his Terminator. And then we go with the Chanda. And then it's just Lydia there uh, to be annoying. And we should be able to get the kill. Definitely, definitely a solid uh, it's the only way to counter them. So this team is very similar to the previous one. Sifi and Arbiter. If this guy is faster than me, I don't think we'll win. <laughs> uh, because of uh, just how it, he's just going to take all his all his turns. In such a high level of arena, if the enemy is faster, he's usually also speed tuned. So it's going to be very difficult for, um, for you to take a turn and cut them in. Unless you have something like a... A Valkyrie which steals Terminator. So uh, we freeze now. We we basically remove this shield buff, and then we'll go for that A1 on Arby. We did reduce the Terminator, but she was very close to getting a turn, so that's why it doesn't show. And then the A3 should be enough to take the kill at least on two of them. Hmm. There's the revive, and uh, okay, let's see. Gonna try and steal that Terminator. We got resisted there. Mm. This is bad. Wow, look at all those buffs. Maybe I should have gone on on Sifi there instead of. Uh... Okay, we do get a turn. Can we kill at least the damage dealers? There we go. Okay, we have this. This is an easy fight. We'll do one more fight in arena, and then we'll go to the dungeons and see. Gurgo in there, because in Arena you realize that speed matters a lot, so having 550 accuracy plus 250 speed might not be the case for everybody, so this one's a strong team as well with CV, no, not CV, Duchess and Arbiter, um, he has more power than me in this one as well, so we're boosting here, let's see if we can steal that Terminator, ah, we did steal it out of three, three out of four, uh, let's go for the freeze. We did freeze everyone. Uh, we'll try and kill that Duchess, which is going to be, I think, the hardest to kill. And that's it. The freeze is going to make Arbiter lose her turn. Boom. That's it. So if the enemy team had something like um, Swift Parry sets or even the cleansing, the new cleansing artifacts, um, accessories, then we might have had a bad... Uh, a bad case there, but see, we're already 50 points away from Platinum, so I'm trying to keep close until tomorrow's reset. So let's go over to the dungeons. I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, basically, you can use him everywhere, but as control, really. 
nothing else. Um, he He's going to help with control, but especially in this stage, if you don't have something that will uh, put a decreased attack, you're probably going to be dead. So with the stats that I have on him right now, 30,000 is very, very low. I'm going to put my Arbit in there for the speed boost. I want to put in there a Stagnite for the defense down and decreased attack. Uh, we're going to have the Trunda for the damaging attacks. And then um, what else? You just want control, right? More control? I think we've got enough with the freeze. So I'll put in something to reduce our cooldown. So I'll put in Renegade and uh, see how this thing works in terms of going through the waves. Of course, Trunda is a bit of an overkill, I think. Look at the freeze. Okay, there's the defense down and Trunda goes. Got a nice reset. And Gurgo there didn't go for his A2. He went there for that A3. There's a triple hit there. So Gurgo should have a freeze right now. No, he went for the A3 now. There is the freeze that we wanted exactly on the dogs. Those those dogs at the front are so annoying because they do apply um, a reflect damage and my Trunda would have been so, so dead. Wow, look at that. Uh, by the way, always, if you put something that has a a um, HP burn plus the freeze, it looks so cool. It changes the the um, the graphics on the enemy character. And if you look closely, that's that's a different effect. It's not the burning and or the freeze. It's a different effect. It's, it's the frost fire effect. So you can look at that very closely. Uh, we did have that with Trenda there. And uh, yeah, the freezes are there. The control is there, as you saw. And now we're just going to take the boss down very, very slowly, hoping to not die. Um, unfortunately, we cannot freeze the boss. There's the first man down. Uh, we need to kill the two ads at the side. There's a the freeze. There's the extra hit. Almost killed it. There's the decrease attack that we wanted on the boss. That's That's what really helps us there. Gergo is down. We do need to kill that ad. Uh, yeah, that ad is dead. Avalanche there with the 30,000. Not bad. So Trunda is going to do her big moves now in terms of damage. Look at that, 355. And honestly here, we just wanted him for control. Again, he needs other champions to accompany him. He's not going to be the reason you beat a dungeon. He's going to be the reason that you beat the waves. So each specific boss needs specific situation. Once you reach the boss, except for the spider, for the spider, uh, you'll be just freezing the ads, which could be good, but you need other champions in there as well. So Gurgo could be amazing if you want to freeze the spiderlings and then also have a way to apply an HP burn. So he would go great with an ultimate galaxy. So we might be able to try that out or I'll just put in another champion that applies a, an HP burn on an AOE, which is going to be the similar case of having an ultimate Galak go um, right after Gurgo. So there it is. So in this setup, I'll just show you the effects of having Gurgo plus an HP burn champion. You do need always a way to reduce um, turn meter for the spider. It makes your life so much easier and the run so much faster. So we'll have Coldheart in there. We'll put it on manual just to show you what would happen on auto. So here, Gurgo does his A2 on auto. He even got resisted, but that's the small chance to get resisted. There you see three Spiralings ready to attack. Uh, we'll just go with the A3 on the boss. 10,000, not nothing crazy. But now, um, Venus would go with her A2, but instead any other champion with HP burn would go uh, first. So if you had a setup for Ultimate Galak, they would try to apply that HP burn on everyone. Look at the HP burns. And because the Spiralings um, are start gonna be taking turns, they should be attacking somebody from your team, but they're frozen plus the HP burn. And you're just going to see the, the, the big spider's health uh, being lost uh, without actually the spiders getting that turn in. So it's just an amazing way to, to reduce the big spider's health because of the HP burn and how it works for the big spider. So uh, here we're having him 
tank it, but he has it in the next turn. So that control would have been there if I had went in there with the full team. So it's definitely possible as long as you have the other parts of the puzzle to make an HP Baron comp work for the big spider. So guys, this was his showcase for Gurgo the Ogre. What do you think of Gurgo? Do you have him? Do you have him booked? Do you use him in a different way in other areas of the game? Please leave it down in the comments below. And guys, subscribe if you haven't already. It definitely helps the channel out. We're reaching two point, no, 22K <laughs> subscribers on YouTube and you guys can help uh, me reaching that goal. So thank you if you are subscribed already, but if you're not, just click that button, click the like button as well. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.